And good news! I have a little more bandwidth to stream tonight than I thought I did, so we can actually make it through the end of part two and kind of see where we are at that point. So, yeah. <laughs> Hi, Ark. <laughs> so, yeah, let's, uh, let's keep going. Oh, well, good. No, you're the, you're the, you got the, you're the first one in, so that's good. It's good. I'm glad you're still around. I hope we can uh, get Iceman Dan and Space Hamlet back uh, for hanging out. Oh, hold on a sec. To give them a little bit of a window to hop in. And to summon them with an enticement. Oh, here's our big guy. Panda's here. And he is, uh, he is even bigger than ever. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. There. This summons, uh, this summons the stream regulars. The, uh, the Delta Head sign. It's just this panda. And thank you for that alert arc. Let me switch it back over. Nifty. And yeah, to your point about the fly buzzing sound, uh, flies. It's interesting that flies are uh, flies are here in space. I guess they would stow away somewhere on something and produce maggots. It is interesting to me that there's uh, on the helmet design this sort of gap in between. Seems like a vulnerability. If I'm being honest. You've been referred to the lab. Please have your referral form and CEC authorization ready. And proceed to the lab office. Oh, no. Oh, I don't like that at all. Alright, buddy. Doing good. Huh. Well, congratulations, you did it. I can tell you've been working on that project for a while here. Uh, nothing personal. I do this to everybody. Oh, this is interesting. <clears throat> oh wait, never mind. Uh, I thought for some reason he was unsquishable. Similar to the lab guy. You know you're right. It's not like there's any kind of ecosystem that they need to protect that the flies are uh, are crucial parts of. Uh, that's just uh, that's just unnecessary. In fact, I can I can only imagine like I mean how would it how would it how would you handle it now if you found flies in uh, in like the International Space Station? I imagine you would not keep them around. Evening, Space Hamlet. It's good to see you back. Uh, yeah, yeah. I have a little more bandwidth here to stream than uh, than initially thought. So this is good. I'm glad we were able to get you. Nope, nope, you are here in time. Uh... Well, sir. I may not agree with what you shriek, but I will defend to the death your right to shriek it. <laughs> if that happens, then I'm just gonna read a read a read a file. And I am gonna read a file. Let's see. 
Strong sedative. Seems literally unable to sleep without chemical aid. Most people succumb to exhaustions after 50 plus hours of waking, regardless of any desire to stay awake. Not Harris. His explanation of an events. Oh, wow, this is a long one. On the colony is also odd and points to the same paranoia we've seen elsewhere planet side. His guilt is not in doubt. Two planet side security officers were present when he took Dr. Schiarello, Schiarello hostage and murdered Nurse Evans. And he doesn't deny his actions, but he insists there was no crime, nor does he feel guilt. Classic sociopathic behavior, but Harris exhibits no other symptoms. Affable and friendly, able to empathize and offer original opinions. Uh, when questioned about the murder, becomes withdrawn and intransigent, displaying schizophrenic behavior. Also undergoes intermittent hallucinatory periods, similar to the experience by the colonists. Claims he threatened the doctor because he had to stop the dreams and the faces. That he'll kill again to make it whole again. Well, that phrase is going to come back. I'm going to be honest with you, Space Hamlet, I myself could go for a cup of noodles right now. Alas, I have none. Hmm. What to buy? I feel like investing in my rig is a good thing to bounce to. From upgrading one of my weapons. There are a few. Uh, I went and bought Oreos last night on Impulse for the first time in forever. I actually don't eat that many uh, sweets of the type. Uh, but, uh, man, I gotta tell you what, those Oreos, Oreos are solid cookies right there. Lady, let me tell you, I am there. What the heck is this guy? I gotta say, that is the most melodic CT scan I ever heard. Oh, I'm absolutely dunking the Oreos, you know it. As I said, as soon as I bought the Oreos and brought them home, I said, now is the time to recreationally drink milk. Usually the um, the only time I usually drink milk is when I is, is with my morning cereal. Actually, I'm curious. This has been a subject of of some disagreement and sometimes scandal, depending upon the party involved. Uh, if you have, let's say you are drinking cereal, as sometimes you do, squish, and uh, you of course use milk to uh, to liven that up. gonna just, just die like that or are you are you okay is that it all right well you're rag dolly so that's it um, maybe it's the anti-gravity but man just in space as soon as you die your limbs are just Falling all over the place. Anyway, have cereal. Put milk in it. Cereal is eaten. Do you drink the milk?
Oh, cool. Well, that cut him up. <laughs> yes, this is my experience as well. And, uh, it pleases me to know this, because... This is not a universal experience. Some people will find the milk to be merely a vehicle of, uh, of supporting the cereal, but as soon as the cereal is done, the milk's value is uh, has been cashed in. And there is therefore no further value in it. So down the drain it goes. And, uh, you know, if I am in the presence of this person, unfortunately, uh, cereal milk is not a transferable food uh, from one person to another. <laughs> like, uh, you know, like, uh, you gotta finish eating those carrot sticks? No, well, I'll have the last five. You can't really do that with the, with cereal milk. So, uh, it is, it breaks my heart to see it go to waste, but uh, go to waste it must. Oh, crap. Kitty. Yeah. Sweet Jesus. Dead and chilling. Oh crap. Okay, so when I crossed the platform, it viewed me as having gone to another area, so it went into the vent and hopped out. Uh, I just kind of feel bad for you now. There we go. Infidels. I do appreciate all these stasis recharges. <laughs> well, Ark, if a sacrifice is, in fact, to be a true sacrifice, it must be something that you dearly want and are willing to let go for the sake of your beloved and or adored uh, person or deity of choice. Therefore, the sweetened post-cereal milk would be a genuine sacrifice. I can get, I can get behind that definition. Uh, I currently... So, this is how I do it. Uh, it is... Uh, it, it is... This is a cereal style that I developed a few years ago when I realized that it was a mind game that you had to have a cereal in your bowl. So I have two cereals in my bowl. The first layer is a sort of sweetened cornflakes, and then that goes halfway up the bowl. Then on top of that, there is what is a sort of like organic, it's called, they're called peanut butter panda puffs, and they are uh, sort of a kind of a peanut butter crunch type thing. So that goes on top, and then the milk goes down there. So then what happens is the milk that's on top takes up the sweetened uh, stuff, pulls it down to the bottom, and so this, this creates a, a combination of flavors in the milk that I quite enjoy and also gives different textures to the cereal eating experience uh, that uh, progresses as the uh, as the breakfast goes on so this is this is how I handle that <laughs> yes that was my feeling on oatmeal as well arc uh, arc Yeah, oh, there was a... Did you ever watch... I don't know how generationally locked this is. Not that we're necessarily that far apart, but this might be a marker of how... of any kind of distance there is. Uh, did you ever watch any of the Ernest P. Worrell movies? Uh, Ernest Goes to Camp, Ernest Saves Christmas, etc. Ah, well, so Ernest is an idiot. This is this is the joke: is that he's the uh, sort of uh, bumbling, uh, bumbling fool who, uh, if not if doesn't save the day himself, at least has a pure enough heart to successfully aid those who do. And uh, at the climax to, or near the climax of Ernest Saves Christmas, 
There are these trolls that have to be defeated. And he's given a hint of M-I blank K. And uh, the obvious answer is milk. But he goes and finds something called Mayak. Oh boy, a vacuum. I don't I believe I'm ready for that. And uh, I don't rightly know what Mayak is, but he produces it, and it is ineffectual. So that is unfortunately, ineffectuality is the only thing that I associate with Mayak. Anyway, the Ernest movies are good fun. Yes, yes, please do not take up valuable airtime to inform me of this. <laughs> okay. All right, tutorial. This time for real. Ah, oh, this is cool. Uh, how do go? Oh, there we are. I like the notion that you can hear your your boots through your suit. At least that that is how that is how I assume that audio is being uh, experienced by Isaac. As you know, the Ishimura is able to set his gravity locally. The grab boots will kick in when you enter a zero G area. styling with that second eye slit there just in case I need to look high and low Why? <laughs> I've been, I have been introduced to oat milk at various points as well, and uh, I seem to remember enjoying it. Wait a whiff, Isaac. There we go. But, um, I can only imagine the, uh, challenges involved in designing this area. 360 degree movement around the level is pretty challenging. Honestly, even to conceive of. busted out my line gun yet. Pulse run schematic. Okay. Oh, that's sellable. I could have sold that earlier. Or saleable, rather, as it is.
I hear the scary music, and I hear the scary sound effects, but I don't see the scary thing. Oh, there it is. Later. Oh, no, 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 no! Wow, that explosion did, like, nothing. Oh, they're flying. I need to use this, uh... Oh. Alright, line gun time. There was a red canister. Oh wow, there's more. Okay. Oh wait, no, that wasn't even an enemy that I threw it at. Jeez, that was just a stray body. That is stressful. Good fight, though. Really good set piece. Okay. So now I need to go back. Yeah, I need to go back. And that is how I got in here from getting the shock pad, and this is how I get out. Let's just line this up for easy grabbing later. I didn't need those at all. Curious? Exiting zero gravity. Entering vacuum. Yeah, this is terrifying. Oh god, that's also scary. The infinite expanse of space is uh, is genuinely quite terrifying. How am I missing you? cubes, I thought that I was going to have to plug them in to a couple of slots to unlock the door back, but uh, and so I was lining them up for easy access because they were scattered around uh, the sort of 360 environment, but I was wrong and I did not, in fact, need them for that purpose, so Chobani Oats, thank you. I will look for that. Yeah, while um, oat milk on its own 
is not particularly interesting to me. Uh, it, it and its similar milks uh, work well for cereal, because with cereal I'm not particularly looking for the flavor of the milk to um, to enhance anything. Uh, but uh, and then once you're done, as we've discussed, the sweetening of the uh, cereal bestowing its flavor unto the medium <laughs> of milk, uh, you know, takes any kind of blandness that's there and uh, cures that problem. else? What am I doing on ammo? I think I'm doing okay. Oh, weird. Did I lose my uh, my prize? Hold on here. No, that's just a fan. Oh man. Which, uh, which signature enemy do you mean, uh, Ark? Oh, actually, I'm remembering that... I am now remembering there are custom sort of, um, I guess, like, glory kills? That's what they're called in, in Doom? And, uh, I remember... Dead Space 2, one of the big selling points for that was it had more of those and more gruesome, customized ones. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah, y yes, you're right. They uh, That and the Ganados sort of demonstrate the basic um, the, the basic core gameplay idea, right? Like with RE, it's that you can shoot different parts of the body and get different effects. And this one, it's cutting off limbs. And uh, yeah, when other enemies show up, you have to use that knowledge... Uh, to kind of crowd control rather than just simply eliminate one by one. I have not played Prey, so unfortunately I don't know that reference. Uh, yeah, let's do it. If you, uh, if you... Uh, yes, Ark. Uh, I, I, uh, yeah, those are, those are basically bullet sponges, right? I think, uh, that you just kind of keep, have to keep shooting them. <laughs> and, and I, and I agree. I think those are, those tend to be the weaker enemies there. Uh, Prey, uh, thank you for the, for the recommendation. I'll take a look at that. It's, uh, is it, is it a first person game? I, I think it is. FPS. Did I use my last of my power nodes? I did not. But I'm gonna save that until I can.
cash in. Ah! Ah, crud. Gross. Oh, wow. That took... It's taking a chunk off my health. No! No, God! Oh. <laughs> I thought I had the last one off. But, uh... No, I didn't. I was uh, going into my inventory. Oh, what a dumb way to die. <laughs> oh, cool. I feel like just letting them chew through a bunch of health items rather than uh, use ammo on them. This feels like kind of a waste. Stasis would have been smart. Oh. You know what? I'm going to keep the loss. Briefly considered save scumming on that. But lessons learned. second I'm trying to check on the time here there we go good all right let's sell some things and get some upgrades nice and nice flamethrower that seems really useful against those little things. <clears throat> At the same time, a power node also seems really useful. Oh, man, what to do? Still October? Uh, do you mean, like, is October the name of a game? Am I understanding right? Yes, uh, Scare Month, October is my third favorite month out of the year. Or rather, I will say it is in my top three favorite months out of the year. I think I can safely dispense with this uh, air canister here. Oh, okay. Yes, yes. I think you've recommended Inside to me before. Uh, yeah, uh, and, uh, and yes. That sounds like that would be a good buffer game. I'd be glad to try that out on, uh, on the stream. Uh, And finally, getting around to a game that comes as highly uh, recommended as you have recommended it. Here we go. Oh, that's it. Huh. Very localized explosion. Like, the most localized. <laughs> okay, you're through. Should be clear from there to the morgue. Remember, the codes are on the captain's body. This is Senior Medical Officer Nicole Brennan transmitting ship-wide. We need more help. We don't have the resources to deal with this many cases. Nobody would tell us what's happening! 
these wounds. We are not equipped to deal with this. Get up to the table. Hold him. Not you. Hold him down. Every course. That was Nicole, right? I can't tell from here when that log was made. I'm sure she's around here somewhere. Ominous. Am I doing on ammo? Could be worse. But yeah, uh, so favorite months in order. October, because October is, uh, is a very well-designed month because uh, it ends with a holiday on the 31st, so you have the entire month building up to it, right? And Halloween is a fantastic, uh, fantastic uh, holiday in its own right. So yeah, so you got a great holiday, great punchline, a lot of great build-up to it. November is fantastic because Thanksgiving and birthday and Christmas, December is like the best month because Christmas is Christmas, and I love Christmas. So those are, those are my months in order. Sorry, we are full. This sign is a very... This sign's giving off very strong we use the last of the inkjet vibes. <laughs> no. me in case you needed clarification on who to help ah jesus <laughs> Anything in here with me? Seems not. A line gun would be perfect for that. Oxygen recharge. I see where this is heading. Evening round delay. It's good to see you. It's been a while. Or at least it's been a while in chat. Alright, Lion's Gun's got a ton of ammo. We're gonna use all this. Okay. There's your standard space bucket of guts. <laughs> If you were in the same time zone that you were when last we spoke, uh, it would be good afternoon to you. Either either way, a, a, I wish you a very good bat. Alright, so I gotta cut the power to the oxygen. Pretty sure. Remind me, is inside a PC game? Or is that on a console anywhere? Oh. 
I have memories of hating this place. Oh, Limbo! I enjoyed Limbo. I had a lot of trouble this, with this last puzzle. But, uh... But enjoyed it nonetheless. Ah, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I don't know if they do this with the, uh, male... derived necromorphs. But, um... The female ones definitely have uh, have a, a, a noticeably human uh, language touch to uh, to their audio design, in a way that is somewhat distressing. All right, that is definitely worth the purchase. You know, this one bullet, I'm not going to freak out over it. In fact, I'm even going to save it for later. Yikes! Jesus. Alright, line gun came in handy for crowd control. And now can pick up the uh, straggler there. Wait, wasn't didn't Limbo have the I'm kind of remembering I'm remembering the ending of Limbo now, and feeling like I wanted a little bit more from it. I enjoyed the atmosphere and the uh, the platforming, though, for sure. Hello? Can anybody hear me? My name is Eileen Fisk. I just woke up in here and everybody was gone. I don't know what's happening. Why did they all leave? I'm going to try and find someone. If you can hear this, please come for me. I can hear scratching in the wall. Hello? Who's there? Are, are you a doctor? Why is everyone... Wait, I know you. You're Harris, the prisoner from the colony. You killed that nurse. Help! Somebody help me! Please! Please! <laughs> Fine, nice and dramatic time for the recording to end. Alright, yeah, we definitely need to start using more of this. to the vent just to surprise me. Whew. That was pretty cool. I liked how I was fighting the guy in the in the, the short distance and the uh, necromorph medium distance climbed into a vent so it could pop up behind me. That was really cool. <laughs> yeah, 
Let's see. Aw. Uh, they're just rubbing that in there on you, aren't they? Thing to pick up here. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Somebody pop out of a vent somewhere. I heard a bang. Not just dogs die, but dogs that you love. Maybe even ask you to form a bond with the dog before they kill it. There's, that's the easy money. Hey, come on, get out. Here's text log cat. So yes, I love to read text logs. I like to read text logs so much I eat computer wires. There you go. There. Hang out. Captain Mateus, Benjamin. Further to our previous conversation, I ask you that you delay bringing the marker up to the planet for a day or two. You know I'm as keen as anyone to study it in detail. And I understand your sense of urgency, given the events of the colony, but that's why I ask. What's happening down there is just too unique, too unprecedented, to cut it short without proper time to study the causes and effects. In light of the discussion, discussion I had with Dr. Mercer, I'd like to meet with Drs. Schiarello and Welland to plan inside to get their observations. Uh, the the thing that does a better job than the newborn list. Uh, what were you referring to? Sorry, I was wrangling that little monster. Do you mean the uh, the the scene with the the doctor? Um, oh, the surgery scene. Yeah. I actually find myself kind of wondering if uh, by proximity it's implied that that woman is the same one who left the audio log. <laughs> Ishimura is science fiction for a metaphor. Science log, Chief Science Officer Dr. Kine reporting. The colony's problems concern me greatly. I have no doubt they are somehow linked to the discovery of the marker but the exact nature of that connection is still unknown. Almost 40% of the colonists are experiencing a form of dementia. The obvious symptoms are acute depression, insomnia, and hallucination. Incidents of violence and even murder also indicate extreme paranoia. Dr. Mercer has advised that I bring some of the affected on board for study. Dr. Wellen, the planet side psychiatrist, has reported that his own analysis has been fruitless. I'm hesitant to rely on Dr. Mercer at this point. But I need his expertise. We need solutions, and we need them quickly. Bringing uh, individuals who are uniformly suffering from some sort of novel behavioral disorder uh, contracted from a planet, bringing that onto a, a closed ecosystem like a space station, always a good idea. 
That's the best way to study it, right? By bringing it home. <laughs> Doing good. I'm finding that the door open sound effects are a weird medley of like four or five different sounds happening at once. It's fascinating. Oh no, yeah, you'd absolutely be bungling your way through based on inference and hope <laughs> alone. Are you... You're a body. Trash can. Can't fool me. Just trying to squish what I can before any enemies show up. Uh, and compromise the area. Alright, I think that's pretty good. They are watching. All things considered, that's, uh, that's some nice zipper locker design. Oh boy, it made it into a big worse one. Jesus Christ. Whew. Received, and they look good. Thank God. I'll start accessing the captain's records right now. Head to the tram station, and I'll contact you there. I'm going to find out what the hell happened to this ship. A sad duty to officially announce Captain Benjamin Matthias dead. Reports on the exact circumstances are conflicted. Oh, wow. That's comprehensive. <clears throat> Let's see. Beyond the scope of my role, I can only report on the body. Subject was in generally good health for his age. The cursory blood test indicates his uh, leukocyte count was very low. With jargon, in particular, almost non-existent. His pre-flight physical exam showed no such problems, including rapid onset, unlikely had any effect on his death. Multiple contusions on the arms and legs, brief struggle post-mortem, pre-mortem, slight contusion around rib cage. chest was restrained, cause of death was a single prolonged trauma to the ocular body, which continued through the cavity wall, into the frontal lobe, he got stabbed through the eye in the brain. Force required to puncture the ocular cavity in this manner is great. Possibility of self-infliction correspondingly low. Unlawful death. Unlawful eye stab. Need a permit to stab that eye.
And now, your locked door means nothing. I feel this cult is getting a little more avant-garde the more we proceed into its madness. Oh yeah, among other things from other games that have worked, that this game is, uh, borrowing and reusing well is um, the Half-Life 2 technique of having uh, cutscene moments happen live during gameplay but on the other side of a barrier that uh, that you cannot cross. Alright, I'm gonna be a sucker and go for it. Ah. Crap, crap, crap. Woo. It's a strong one. At least he had money on him. That's something you can console yourself with. <laughs> uh, what was my key item there? Captain's rig. Oh, yes. Okay. Jesus. Somehow one of them found a way down to the captain's nest. I managed to contain it in a damaged escape pod. Lifting executive lock down now. I found the deck logs. Whatever is happening around here, it came from the planet when they cracked it open. It spread to the colony and reached the ship. Isaac, this isn't an infection. It's some form of alien life. Shit, we've got bigger problems. The ship's engines are offline and our orbit is decaying. Get over to the engineering deck ASAP while I stay here and figure out what the problem is. I like how he's, there's, uh, the secondary characters are super proud of the aliens that they've managed to either escape or, uh, oh, music is happening. Anyway, that they're super proud of the aliens that they've managed to capture or escape, and Isaac has just, like, mowed through a ton of them and is not bragging at all. Okay. Whew. How many power nodes do I have? I have one. If I got two of these, I could upgrade my rig's health. Do I have a bench nearby? I can do that at. That's the wrong thing. Oh, that's a strange map sound. Listen to that again. Weird. Strangely biological sounding. Okay, so there is a workbench. How do I zoom in? So if I go through that door, around the hallway, and into the next room, there is a workbench. And... That seems worthwhile. Uh, 
All right. Gotta spend this money. Gotta save this game. Just in case I weirdly regret this choice. least inviting place to backtrack to for this purpose. <laughs> no, you're right. That's the thing about being an engineer is that if uh, every time you learn how to use a tool, you also have to learn how to use it to destroy new alien life forms. There we go. And my spine just got a little bit longer. a good thing to recharge also. I think pacing out upgrades between uh, one level of uh, weapon upgrade then uh, then health, I think that makes sense. Gotta stack them like that. Anything here? Good. Whew. Yes, save that progress. Wait, did I? Yes, would like to overwrite. Go into the engines and the engineering deck. All right, now that places us at a good stopping point. So thank you everybody for uh, who came back for the uh, remainder of the stream and uh, Space Hamlet Roundly. It's great to see you again and Ark as well. So everybody have a great night, and uh, again, we'll pick up with Chapter 3 on Tuesday, uh, 8, 9-ish Pacific Standard Time. So have a great night.